Hey everybody, Paul and Brenda here from uh, Jerusalem Israel Live and uh, we're going to give some people a few minutes to maybe catch on that we are live. I know it's different times of day on different parts of the earth, but hopefully some of you can catch this live. We just felt like we wanted to update you. We just got finished with doing a live for uh, TCT Network and uh, literally seconds before mm -hmm. uh, we had another, we had sirens going off and then felt the Iron Dome uh, disseminating some, uh, another rocket or, or I don't know how many, but we could feel the glass and the pressure. You can actually feel it. Um, the target has been uh, Jerusalem right now. And, and so there, the tensions have been mounting, mm -hmm. but uh, we just wanted to really be able to come to you from Jerusalem and give you a sense of uh, what it feels like here, the realities, and also uh, the, the reality of that God is sovereign and he is in charge. And uh, just to let you all know, because so many people have been, bless your hearts, we love you so much. We appreciate your prayers and that you have constantly reached out to tell us how much you love us. and. Right. Uh, that you are praying for Israel, you're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, and uh, we just want to kind of give you an update. So I saw that Wendy Griffith just joined. Wendy, we love you. Thank you for joining. Hope you can stay for this. Um, but, honey, do you want to share a little bit of what's been happening? Yeah, well, if you didn't catch our first Facebook Live, that was... It seems like a month ago, but it was only literally a couple days ago. A couple days ago, and it, it feels like a month in between. Yeah, yeah. honestly. But, but we were here last week for uh, a happy occasion. We were here installing some equipment for some new studios. We produced some shows uh, from another studio location about three miles from here. But this Saturday, or last Saturday, was supposed to be one of our happy days. Right. We were going to get up, we were going to go out into the Judean yes. Hills oh. with some friends, have a barbecue, produce and shoot uh, some, uh, your testimony yeah. video yes. is really kind so of what we were planning on doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, Saturday morning we were stirring and all of a sudden we hear these air raid sirens, mm -hmm. you know, and again, when you're asleep, you don't know if it's an air raid siren, a tornado siren. Right. Uh, you don't know if it's real or a test. So, uh, you know, both of us kind of got up. We, we listened to it. And Brenda actually grabbed her phone and walked out on this very balcony and uh, started just kind of, you, you were recording the audio first, just to kind of get the audio. Just a video, yeah. And, well, video with audio and showing uh, this gorgeous mm -hmm. view. But then all of a sudden, I, I said, baby, look up. And she did, and all of a sudden, we're seeing these little streaks going across the and sky. The, and the puffs of smoke from, obviously, from rockets that were being taken out by the, the Iron, Iron Dome. Dome. And then the concussions came. Right. Now, sound takes much longer to travel than, than light. But they were farther away that day. Correct. So about 50 miles from here is the Gaza Strip. As you can many see, we're outside the old city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Right over our shoulder is the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And they're actually calling this the Al-Aqsa War, which is quite interesting. <laughs> but, you know, we realized at that point, okay, this is a little more serious than we thought. Right. And then our friend uh, called us from Bethlehem that we were going to go with, and he just basically said, uh, everything, everything all the borders shut down. were closed. And, yeah, which we did update uh, a couple days ago Correct. about all of that. But since then, you know, we've learned that really the target is Jerusalem uh, now, and probably always was. But uh, there's uh, there are there's a lot of activity all the way up north, and uh, you know there are some truly hurting people here. And the tensions have been mounting. We feel them uh, even here in the hotel. And listen, we are here coexisting among people from all nations and within the staff, uh, you know, Jewish community and Arab community all working together. And, you know, I just, I'm just being here on this soil brings it home 
in a different way than when you're watching it through the lens of a camera. And so we just really want to impart something to you today and to say, please don't get desensitized by the news or by the things that you're hearing and seeing. Don't let it just be entertainment for you, but please pray for these people. Pray for this land. Pray for God, for thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I know that God loves these people and we have we also have as we have expressed to you Christian friends that are Palestinian and you know not all of the Palestinians align with this uh, Hamas. Hamas and so you know there's and we're trying to be careful when we're online um, it's very confusing it's it's a difficult situation and you know but people are trying to get out and that Flights are being canceled left and right. It's very difficult. We were supposed to be in another country uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, we are still here. So, you know, we have the peace of the Lord with us, yeah. but we also know that we are to walk in wisdom and discernment, and there is a reality of something that's happening, and we need to be praying. Right. Yeah. What I would say, you know, we've been here a couple, many times, and occasionally you'll get a little rocket go off now and again. Even last time we were here with yeah, on, on yeah. a tour, and it just didn't you know, seem like that big a deal. It was not that big a deal, folks. This was a whole nother ball game. Yeah. And uh, one Israeli Jewish guy we talked to said, "This is our version of 9/11." You know, we all know where we were in the shock and horror uh, when those planes crashed into our territory and into our buildings and into New York City. Well, they feel the exact same way here in, Jer in well, all over Israel. Right. Because the Gaza Strip is down by the Mediterranean. It's 50 miles mm -hmm. over my shoulder here. But the border wall around that makes the Mexico-California border mm -hmm. wall look like a chain link fence. Yeah. I mean, that thing has a no man's land. It's got concrete walls. It's got high razor wire. And it is uh, patrolled really by drones, by infrared cameras. It's patrolled by tanks. It is, you know, guarded uh, by satellite. But they did find a spot to break through. But the Israelis are all in shock going, how could not one guy but mm -hmm. hundreds mm -hmm. not only breach that fence, mm -hmm. break through, but make it all the way into some of those cities that outlie Gaza and just the destruction, the, the, the uh, you know, taking hostages, right. the killing. That was the goal. The trauma that they <laughs> have imparted on the psyche of this right. nation and that's part of their goal. I mean, Hamas is, uh, I don't understand that mentality. I don't think any of us do. But it is a complex situation here because many Palestinians who love the Lord, who, right. you know, live here, live in peace, many feel that they are in an occupied territory. Right. No different than the American Indians, many of them feel, even though they have their own lands and governing system, they feel occupied. The white Europeans. And this goes back even farther yeah, time. Yeah, than that, the so American Indians that's were going a back. Pale example. Two or three hundred years. Yes. I mean, we're talking two thousand, three thousand, right. four thousand years. <clears throat> they've been dealing with this. So just know it is a an unbelievably complex situation. Ninety nine point nine percent of the people want peace, uh, want to live together, want to build a community. You know, the sad part, as we talked to some of the shop owners and taxi drivers, yeah. COVID devastated yeah. many people the and, and, and the tourism and the businesses. Mm -hmm. Tourism is a huge part of the economy here in, uh, in Israel. And they were just pulling out Recovering. and crawling out of the, yes. you know, out of the swamp, so to speak, yeah. with a lot of tourists. When we got here, this hotel was packed. Mm -hmm with tourism and people buying things and buses. So and you saw the look of despair on their faces. Yes. And just a, oh kind of a goodness. hopeless, um, you know, the sorrow is deep. And there are families who are grieving, that, that are, have missing family members, mm. uh, people that have lost family members. 
And as we understand, there are even Americans that have been uh, taken out. And uh, we are being smart. We're staying safe. We want you to know that uh, we're not doing anything stupid or taking any risks. But, uh, you know, we trust in the Lord. The peace of God is here with us. And I, I want to read to you because you mentioned, uh, I'm going to grab this heavy study Bible that Please. I have here on the help. table. But thank you. Um, you mentioned you know, these different cultures and, and kind of the agendas behind that we don't understand. But, you know, ultimately the, the agenda of evil comes from the enemy, uh, the enemy of our soul. And uh, he is out to kill, steal, and destroy all of humanity mm -hmm. and to really hijack the image of God that every one of us was created in. I don't care if you're American or Jewish or Palestinian or uh, Roman or Greek or whatever you are, you were created in the image of God. And uh, so I, I just want to read from Psalm, uh, my page flipped in the wind, uh, Psalm 125. This is so beautiful. <clears throat> And it's a song of ascents. I don't have my glasses, but bear with me. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. So they're solid, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forever. Mm. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous. For... For then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. The Lord do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. Peace be on Israel. And that's right from the word of God in the Psalms. And I just want you to continue to know that we need you to pray. And when we leave here, I'm leaving a part of my heart because we have been here to experience something that is humbling, something we've never experienced before. Every time we've been here, it's been joyous, even when there were some threats that felt off in the distance. But, and we've been safe. But God has allowed us to be here at, for such a time as this to experience and become a part of the fabric of these people yeah. and to, to have compassion on what they hurt, what they go through. And it is, it is the suffering of human beings and the complexities of generational pain. And I'm asking you to pray for the peace of Israel, for the peace of Jerusalem, for the protection of God's people, Amen. for all of the Christians who are here, that they would be able to get home safely. There are some who have dual residents who live here. We know precious people. They're not leaving. And I'm just asking you to continue to pray. Don't let yourselves become desensitized by the news or just get worn out. Listen, in our Western culture, we are pretty lazy and we, we're pretty driven by me first. And I'm challenging you today to just get outside yourself and to continue to hold up these precious people and that God would bring a spirit of peace and that there would be a, a resolve that would come quickly to this nation. Amen. Well, you know, just to give you a little geography lesson a little bit, we could not be standing, I don't think, in a more strategic spot in all of history, to be honest. I mean, this little valley and yeah. some of these hills have been some of the most embattled and fought over places since the beginning of mankind. The Crusades took place all in right. these valleys, uh, you know, if you want to go back a few hundred years ago. But uh, right over our shoulder, in fact, I, I'm kind of pointing at it. It's hard to see. In fact, I can barely see it right there. The little gold dome right there. That is the El Aqsa Mosque. And that, uh, it, strangely enough, they're calling this the El Aqsa War, yeah. because hmm. apparently some something uh, several weeks ago, some soldiers or people went up, and the the uh, Muslims that. felt like they desecrated the mm -hmm. site, and and it is probably the most holy site uh, for the Jews and the Muslims, because on that area, uh, you know, thousands of years ago, sat the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. And not only the Temple Mount, but they think it's exactly where the Holy of Holies would have yeah. sat. And in that 
uh, they call it the Dome of the Rock because there is a rock in there that the Muslims be believe it's the rock that Isaac uh, sacrifice, uh, took um, his son up for sacrifice and that they actually believe uh, that's a rock where God literally created Adam, you know, so I don't know, but it is very holy to them and it's very protected. So, uh, but, uh, you know, everything here just in times like this become more volatile. Yeah. People are on edge. And, you know, we just well, have to be careful. And if you think about it, I mean, think about some of your own uh, maybe inner conflicts, maybe with your family or friends. And when you have been holding on to bitterness, a bitter root, uh, and there's been woundedness and, and pain and unforgiveness, uh, any slight little thing can set that off and, and incite such anger that you know damage is done and this is on a much grander scale and so this is very complex it's it's very it's rooted in history throughout the ages and this is absolutely the center of the earth and uh so i have felt even i just want to say even in coming here there was a sense that i had in my spirit that God is doing something right now. There was something huge that was shifting. So, you know, we don't need to be in despair. We don't need to be in a place of hopelessness as believers in Jesus Christ. We can place our hope in him. He is the hope on our horizon and he is our deliverer. He is our protector in no matter what kind of situation we are in. And understanding that we his ways are not our ways and they are higher than us and sometimes we think we have a finger on the pulse but we're just being sensitive to maybe that God is doing something there is a shift taking place and I believe that God is moving us into a new season and we hear that being thrown around and kind of misused and abused so much but I truly believe that and this is so much bigger than any of us or what any of us could produce Amen. God is doing something it is time to pay attention to your walk with Jesus if you don't know him get to know him Amen. if you have been lackadaisical in your relationship with him I encourage you I beseech you to spend time in saying Lord reveal yourself to me Amen. I don't want to just know what I've been taught through religion I don't want to just know what I hear on Sunday mornings I want to know you as the logos the Word of God alive in me Amen. the Word of God the incarnate glory of God he came here as as the incarnate God in flesh he came here and walked among Amen. this city and lived among these people and then gave his life and he did it all to just give his life. He taught us that his kingdom was about servanthood, Amen. the suffering servant. But we have been afraid of suffering. We run from pain, we run from suffering and we run toward power. But God is saying, I want your hearts and I want you to know what it means to pick up your cross and follow me daily. Amen. You know, one other interesting thing, and I was watching you preach. That's a good little message. Well, good job. It was not intended to be a message. I Listen, that's where we all need to be, to understand that's what he's calling us Step to. Step towards me just a little bit. But right over <clears throat> Brenda's shoulder right here is literally Mount Zion. You mentioned it in the scripture. Yes. And that, I, we don't quite have it framed. Unshakable. But uh, Ascension Tower is on that hill where Christ ascended from that little piece of real estate right there. And that's, you know, we're not gonna solve this, I think, in our lifetime. The peace, right. we can pray for the peace, but we're not gonna see peace till we have the Prince of Peace. And that is literally where he is gonna return if we read our scriptures properly. So, But from, we can certainly pray for the intervention amen. of the Holy Spirit and, and for God's will to be done. And in a minute, <clears throat> I, you know, Grab your friends, grab your family members, grab, call somebody on the phone because we are going to pray. We're going to link Jerusalem, Israel with all of you back home in America. And we want to pray for the peace of this little, little nation. Um, you know, Israel is only 10 million people. It's only the size of New Jersey. And so uh, it just, you know, geographically, it's literally like a speck on the I'm map. I'm looking at comments. Yeah. But... I, I still think that it is probably the most amazing, uh, important mm -hmm. piece of real estate 
on the planet. And we've been here for such a time as this. Literally, you know, we were talking about two days ago in the morning, but what, 30 minutes ago, oh, we were getting yeah. ready to go live yeah. with, I don't a, think we mentioned that. with another network. <laughs> and the air raids, sirens blasted again. We felt, uh, we felt the Iron Dome at work, the uh, glass that's just behind this camera. Uh, it, it the concussion just, it, was yes. actually moving it like a drum. Yeah. So we, we could, could hear it, it, we could feel it. So it's not over. I think that, you know, this conflict could go on for, I pray, not weeks, months, you know, years. I don't think so. Uh, but we, we need to join hands as Americans. We need to love the Palestinians. We need to love the Jewish people. We need to love everybody because this is not going to be and solved. And you're not saying love this agenda. Correct. Uh, we, we, we stand against the evil agenda, but, of course. Uh, and we stand with Israel, uh, but we, we, we want you to understand that, that Jesus came to pour himself out for all of humanity. He died for every one of us, and I just feel like we need to pray right now, Go, Father, baby. in the name of your Son. I'm asking you, Lord, even through this small little thing here on Facebook that you would reach someone's heart, that you would cause them to see your love, your love for them, and that you are here, and there is hope, and that all we have to do is to call out to you, Lord Jesus, reveal yourself to all of us in a new and a fresh way. Let us see your glory. Let us see who you are. Oh God, I pray for all of the wounds of humanity. You died for those, those wounds. You were wounded for our iniquities. And I ask you, Father, to pour yourself out again. Let, let us experience Amen. the Holy Spirit pouring out upon all of humanity again, like you did in Pentecost, Lord. Let us experience this. Let there be microbursts of your outpourings Amen. among us and among the nations. Let us experience a revival of what it means to serve you and to know you. We love you, Lord. We love you and we worship you from this spot on the earth and from all of the places that each viewer is. And I ask you, Father, to do your work. Holy Spirit, encourage the viewers today. Enc encourage people where they are as there's so much sadness. There's so much anxiety and fear. But be the peace that is everlasting. We thank you, Lord, and we Amen. give you praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And I got to say to our friends and family and loved ones, they... <laughs> It, it, we're in a 10 hour difference, you know, yeah. we're 10 hours ahead. So when they start waking up, everybody's texting us going, are you okay? Have you left? Yeah. Obviously we have not left yet. We've yeah. missed uh, three flights and we're so not far. we not any information. Right. But, <laughs> not uh, right now. We are going to get out of here just fine. We are healthy, happy. We have, uh, we're safe, very safe. And uh, I believe that our steps have been ordered divinely by Correct. the Lord and that we are exactly in the palm of his hand and we sure do appreciate all of your prayers uh, for protection and safety and favor and we pray the same for you wherever you are amen yeah I'm not sure we'll get a chance to do this again before we leave we'll try but we just wanted to give you a quick update that uh, on what's going on and that pray for Brenda and I pray for health pray for uh, traveling mercies mm -hmm. as we make our way back to the united states but uh it's been it's been an interesting time it has. it's been <laughs> now let's be honest yeah stressful yes uh it, it's been a roller coaster ride of emotions <laughs> because you don't know right. what uh the next minute brings you don't know what tomorrow brings and you right. you know it's so easy for us to kind of put our hope and our trust and in, into something that seems sure and man the rug can get pulled out from under your feet right and we need to have a higher confidence and a trust that is in the peace of God Amen. when there's chaos all around us and uh, we need to learn to walk in that and there's tension sometimes there in that place but you know what be encouraged because he's with you and that is the, the we're in a different world Amen. and uh, we're here for such a time as this Amen. well from like I said the most I think strategic part coveted. and coveted part of the planet and sadly enough the most embattled 
part of the planet. If you really understand, you know, what has taken place throughout history. And for the prophecy people, if you understand what's going to take place in these valleys and, uh, you know, the different mountains and that mountain, according to scripture, is going to split wide open Mount Zion when Christ returns and his feet touch again to bring uh, peace for a thousand years. You know, as you were talking about the, this being the most coveted piece of land, I think that what's behind that is that he, human beings desire uh, to have a piece of what is divine because mm -hmm. of the power that it represents. And, you know, we can all have that through the person of Christ Amen. right where we are. It doesn't matter if you're in a prison cell or if you're in a sick bed or if you're here in Israel or if you're in a, another part of the world. It doesn't matter where you are. The, the person of Christ sent the Holy Spirit and he sent him out for all of us. And his message is good news and it has gone around the world. And it is for you today as much as it is for Amen. anyone. Yeah, and feel free to share this video with any and all, as many as you can, just to let people know what's going on, certainly from a Christian perspective Amen. and from a faith Amen. perspective. We but send our love guys. to you, and uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, we will try. We'll try to do it again. Yeah. Uh, it might be from another place, but we'll see. All right. <laughs> Bless you guys. Blessing. Be well. Keep praying.